Welcome to this video tutorial on controlling trains remotely over the internet using JMRI. In this first step, I will show you how to connect your computer to your layouts. You're going to need some type of computer to connect to your model railroad. In my case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. That's the small black box you see there. On this Raspberry Pi, I'm running a version of Linux called Raspbian and running JMRI on that. You can use any type of computer. It can be a Windows computer or a Macintosh. It doesn't really matter. The other two items you see are the yellow cable, which is an Ethernet cable that's connected directly to my router. You could also connect your computer to your router via Wi-Fi. The gray cable is a USB cable that is connected to my Digitrax PR3 that is in turn connected to LocoNet on my model railroad. Here's a picture of the control center for my layout. Many of these components have nothing to do with the remote control of the layout we're going to look at today, but I thought you still might be interested anyway. Over to the bottom right is my power management, power coming in to power some of these components, and track power coming into these components. In the top right hand corner is a Digitrax LNWI that allows for control of the layout via a smartphone in the room where my layout is. The two big green boards in the middle are PM42s. Those allow me to have short circuit control or power management for different blocks on my layout. In the bottom left hand corner is a PR3. You see the gray cord, that's a USB cord coming out of it in the bottom left. That's what's connected to back to my computer. This PR3 has been replaced by the PR4 from Digitrax or many of the newer Evolution or Digitrax Zephyr components have USB built into them. So you can replace that PR3 with any of those other components that allow you to connect via USB. In step two, we will set up JMRI and turn on the servers needed for our remote control. Here's the screen of the Raspberry Pi that's connected to my model railroad. You can see that a current version as of this recording is running on this Raspberry Pi. Now, in order to connect to it, you need to have the Wii Throttle running. In order to get to the Wii Throttle, go to Tools, Throttles, and at the bottom go to Start Wii Throttle Server. When you do that, you'll see that my layout is actually connected with two separate IP addresses. The first IP address, the 192.168.61, is an IP address for the Wi-Fi that my Raspberry Pi is serving out to the room. So my Raspberry Pi is acting like a hotspot or a connection point, but it's isolated so that somebody with a phone or a tablet can connect directly to this. The other IP address, the 192.168.186.86.36, is how my Raspberry Pi is connected to my router. In my case, it's connected via Ethernet, but it could be connected via Wi-Fi. The other thing we need to do is turn on the web server. That again is under the Tools menu and all the way at the bottom is Start the JMRI web server. This serves a web page that allows you to access things like the throttle, your roster, panels, things like that on a web page that you can access either inside the network or from the internet as we're going to see. The web server connects to port 12080. That's going to be important in the next step as we set up our router. The next step in this process is setting up port forwarding on your router. This is a little bit technical and it's a little different for every brand of router that's out there. So do a Google search for your brand of router and port forwarding to see if you can find directions online on how to do this for your router. 
Before we start setting up the port forwarding on your router in your house, here's a little tutorial about how this is going to work. So you have the internet out there and you have your devices in your house and probably sitting between those two things is your modem slash router. You have a modem that allows your cable line or your phone or DSL or something to connect and then the router is what allows multiple devices in your house to connect to that modem and go out to the internet. Well that router has really two IP addresses. On the outside it has an IP address that the internet knows. So from the outside its address might be something like 26103162 like in my example here. It also then creates dynamically a internal IP address. Usually the internal IP addresses are 192.168.1.1 and that's the internal address of the router. Then it assigns smaller internal addresses to all of the individual devices inside of your house. So you might have a phone that's con that's at 192.168.125 and a printer that ends in 13 and a computer that ends in 12 and so forth and so on. So the 192.168.1 is the same as that last number that changes for each of the individual devices. So you might have a computer that's at 192.168.112 that has JMRI running on it. The other important part is to know what part of that computer you want to access. So that's where the ports come in. So you have many ports on your computers that are open all the time for doing things like streaming YouTube or Netflix or things like that. The port is how your router knows where to send things. So for JMRI, we have two ports that are important here, 12080 and 12090. 080 is the port for web serving from JMRI, and 12090 is the port for the Wii Throttle server on JMRI. So there's a little bit of quick background. If you want more information, do a Google search about how a router works, but that gives you some basic information. The other thing you're going to need to know for this process is what is the IP address that the internet sees for your router or modem. So what is your outside IP address? To find this, go to a Google search and do what is my IP address and the first thing that will come up is exactly what your IP address is. Mine's grayed out but you can see where it will be and it will be four digits separated by periods that show your external IP address. Again you need to know this so somebody can connect to you from the outside. In my house I have a Google Wi-Fi network. That requires me to use an app to make any changes to the settings. With your router, you're going to have to figure out how you can make those changes. Some of them require you to access the configuration or the settings via a web page. Others have apps like mine. Again, that, you're going to need to figure that out for your specific router. So I'm going to go to Google Wi-Fi. I'm going to go to Network in General. And I want to get into the Advanced Networking Features. The one I want to look for is port management on mine. So again, it's something about ports or port forwarding that you're looking for. And I want to add a new one. So in the bottom right hand corner, I'm going to hit the little plus. For mine, it's going to show me my devices. If you look at the third one down, that's the DCS JMRI Pi. That's my Raspberry Pi that's connected to my network and connected to my railroad. You notice the IP address is 192.168.86.36. That's the same IP address that we saw back in JMRI. So that's the one I want to select that's connected to my railroad. Hit next. And now I don't want to connect all the ports. I just want to connect a couple of them. So the ports I want to connect for JMRI are 12080 and 12090. Those are the couple ports I want to connect. I'm going to leave these other settings the same for our purposes here. And I'm going to hit Done. Okay. It's saving the changes now. So now there's a port forwarding setup that I've created in the 
configuration files for my router. The fourth and final step is to connect a device over the internet to my railroad and run some trains. Now I'm down at my model railroad, the N-Scale Deer Creek and Susquehanna Railroad. I have a BNO Mikado on the tracks ready to run. Now I'm in the same room as my layout, so I could directly connect to my Raspberry Pi and run a train. But to show you that I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my Wi-Fi. That way, the only way I'm connected is through my LTE network. I'm not connected to the local Wi-Fi. Now, when I open up We Throttle, it should automatically go to the configuration page. So I have to select a server. So I'm going to hit Configure. And here's where you need to know your router's outside IP address. And you're going to enter that in those four boxes at the top. Again, mine are blurred out for you. But each of those four digits will get entered up there. And then the port for the Wii Throttle server is 12090. And I'm going to connect. Okay. Since I'm connected to JMRI, I can look at my roster. There's my roster. This is Locomotive 4505, so I'm going to select that and set that. Okay. Now I can go to my throttle, and I can do things like ring the bell. Blow the whistle. And I'm all doing all this remotely over the internet, not connected to my local Wi-Fi. I'm even going to start running the train a little bit. And I'll come backwards. Again, all of that was o over the internet, not the local Wi-Fi. The last thing I want to show you is how to use a web server to access your model railroad. Remember earlier in our settings for JMRI, we turned on the web server. So now if you go to your favorite browser, I have Google here, and enter in that IP address, your outside IP address that you looked up earlier. I'm going to gray mine out here um, just so you can't see it again. And then after the IP address, those four digits separated by decimals, do a colon and 12080 is to the port to access the web server. Okay. So once you do that and hit enter, um, you will see my model railroad come up on this web page, the Deer Creek and Susquehanna. Okay. Here you can do several things. Um, you have a few different columns, and I've got the name of my railroad in there, so some of these things you have to change in your setting and everything. Um, down the left-hand side, you see the throttles. There's a web throttle and then the other ones are really just links for advertisements to we throttle engine driver and whatnot in the middle column you have any open windows so i have we throttle open and the jmri panel pro so you can view those a little bit and then there's for on the right there's several other uh, links that you can follow to access different files and things like that along the top you can access um Things like panels, if you have panels set up, you can access those panels. You can also access your roster, if you have your roster in JMRI. You can also access the Operations Pro part of JMRI. Um, I'm not going to do that here, and I don't have anything set up, but I do have another video coming soon about Operations Pro and getting the basics set up for Operations Pro. And the last one is tables so if you have some tables set up for turnouts and sensors you can access that there so i'm going to hit deer creek and susquehanna to go back to the home page and i'm going to click on the web throttle
So this is another way somebody could run your railroad from another location. The roster shows up, so you just find a locomotive. We'll go to that 4505, click on the 4505 again, and you get a throttle in a web page. You can see in the middle there are all of the um, different functions, and I have them labeled on mine. Otherwise, they'd say F1, so forth and so on. Over on the right-hand side, you actually have a throttle so you can click any place in that big bar and drag up to make it move forward drag down to slow it down and the two arrows at the bottom are moving forward if the arrow is pointing up and moving backwards if the arrow is pointing down okay um, this one opened in a new tab so I'm just gonna go ahead and close that tab and go back a page to get back to the Deer Creek and Susquehanna main page. So as you can see here, um, you can access a lot of the information that you can get in JMRI right from this web server. Again, the big kind of thing you have to get over is and find a way to deal with is you don't see the railroad when you're operating it for, for the internet. So you gotta have a camera in there, somebody to talk to, to tell you what you're doing. But this shows that you can actually operate the railroad um, over the internet. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something along the way. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to us on YouTube at HarmWeb Media. Also, you can visit our website at www.harmweb.org where you can find more information about the N-Scale Deer Creek and Susquehanna Railroad, as well as all of the other railroads owned by members of our group. While you're at the website, don't forget to sign our guest book and leave us any comments. Again, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.